Okay, so in this problem we're told water and then oil, which don't mix, are poured into a U-shaped tube open at both ends. They come to equilibrium as shown in the figure. What is the density of the, uh, the oil? Hint, pressures at points A and B are equal, and then they ask us why that is. So I went ahead and drew the figure here. So we have this oil. We know it's 22 centimeters, uh, basically tall right here. And then we've got water all along here. And then uh, the water goes up to here, basically, which is 8.62 centimeters below uh, the oil here. And so what we're trying to find here is the density of the oil, which is basically uh, we're trying to solve for the rho of the oil, right, where rho just represents den uh, density. It's just the Greek letter that we use to represent density. And so the way we're going to do this is by using pressure. So you need to know the formula for pressure is pressure equals the initial pressure, right, of the outside, uh, plus uh, the density of our liquid here, times gravity, times uh, the height. And so keep in mind, density, or rho, is just the density of the liquid. So whatever liquid we're referring to. And then we have g, which is the acceleration due to gravity. That's a constant. And then h is essentially the height from uh, the surface here. So whatever the height is at the point where uh, the pressure here. So basically, whatever the distance is from the free surface here, that's showing how I refer to it. So whatever that distance is, is how we calculate it at a certain point. So the pressure at this point B would be the density of the water, right, rho, times G times the height relative to this outside part here. So it would be essentially this height right here, whatever that value is. And so, uh, yeah, so how are we going to solve for this? So we know the density, or sorry, the pressure at point A and B are equal. So if we can, uh, if we know these are equal, right, you could say the pressure at A is equal to the pressure at B. And so what we're going to find is the formulas for the pressure at A, the formula for the pressure at B, and then the, the, uh, the density for oil is going to be in this formula allowing us to solve. So uh, let's go ahead and start with A. So the pressure at A is here. And so we know it's going to be uh, the initial pressure plus uh, rho g h. So uh, let's go ahead and write this. So the p sub zero plus rho, which is what we're trying to find of the oil, times g, which is, we'll actually just leave it like that because it's going to cancel. And then the height is the distance from the point to uh, the free surface right here, which is 22 or 27.2 centimeters. So that value right there is 0.272 meters. Uh, you should just know you divide by 100 to convert that. And uh, yeah, so that's PA, the pressure at A. But now let's do the pressure at B. So once again, you have P0 plus the rho of water this time, right? And so that's just the constant value. You should know that, uh, or you need to know it. It is 1,000 kilograms per meter cubed. So that's the pressure of water. Or sorry, the density of water. Uh, and then we have G. And then once again, we have to do the height. So what is the distance from here to the free surface right here? So what is this to the surface? Uh, we know this whole distance is 27.2. And then this little distance is 8.62. So uh, if we subtract this number from this number, that'll give us this distance right here. So we have 27.2 minus 8.62. Let me go ahead and plug that in minus 8.62, you get 18.58. Key mind, this is centimeters, so you would divide by 100, 0.1858, this is now in meters. And yeah, now we have it in meters, so plugging that in. And so notice we have two formulas, PA and PB, and so what we're gonna do now is just set them equal to each other. So you have this right here, so I'm just taking PA right now, and setting it equal to uh, PB. So the pressure at point A is equal to the pressure at point B. G times 0.1858. And so notice here that you have your initial pressure is going to cancel. Your Gs are going to cancel. And so we're just going to have the density of the oil times 0.272 equals the density of the water, right, rho, uh, multiplied by 0.1858. And so let me actually write this value in. So this was 1,000, right? Remember the density of water I wrote was 1,000. So we have 1,000 times 0.1858.
So if we want to solve for the density of the oil, you would just divide. So plugging this in, 1,000 times 0.1858 divided by 0.272, you're going to get uh, the density, rho of the oil, is equal to 683.09, basically. So about 683. And then keep in mind, we use kilograms per meter cubed for the density of water. So we have the same units since these units uh, will just cancel, right? This is meters. So they just cancel. So you could have left it in centimeters, but it's always good uh, to cancel it like that or just to have it in meters. So you have your density of the oil here. The row is 683 kilograms per meter. And uh, yeah, so keep in mind why these pressures are the same. So we know this thing is in equilibrium, meaning uh, since we have the same liquids under here, that they have to be uh, in equal equilibrium, right? All throughout here is the same liquid. So since it's in equilibrium, the pressures here have to be the same. And right, that's made up because we have a bigger air gap right here relative to here. And this is because oil is less dense, right? And a quick check is if you ever mess up, notice, uh, or if you're just wondering if you're correct, notice oil is on top of here. So obviously it's less dense if it's floating above the water or if it's above the water. And we got a value that's less than uh, 1,000, right? So we obviously know this is less dense, which is proven by our picture here. So it's always a quick check to do that. And uh, yeah, so all we did once we know we, they were equal is you have the formula for the pressure uh, at point A and B, but we could use two different liquids since you have uh, oil here and then water here. And then it's just a matter of setting them equal and then just solving for it. Since we already know what it is for water, yeah, it's just 1,000 kilograms per meter cubed. Uh, and then it's just a matter of solving. Uh, but yeah, so 683 kilograms per meter cubed, that's going to go ahead and be your answer. And hopefully you found this video useful.